this is James uh, from Jay's 3D Adventure uh, and today in episode 3 of the Dbot Core XY 3D printer build we're going to be having a look at the completed frame. Um, I know in, in the previous video I said I was going to be making half of the frame and then making the video to show you how it all went together um, but you kind of get into a groove when you start building things uh, and I just carried on going but that has meant I can go through the whole build guide uh, and pick out a few things that perhaps you could look out for when you're building your printer. So let's have a look at the completed frame. Okay, so here it is. Um, so as you can see, I have pretty much, the printer is at a stage where it's uh, moving on its X, Y, and Z axis. Um, it's very, basically very temporarily wired up just to make sure everything is working. Um, I've run the belts, um, lead screws are installed, etc. Um, the reason I've probably got to this stage rather than sort of coming back uh, and doing a video is because really once you've got both sides of the frame made, the, the, the next step is to literally put them together. Um, <clears throat> so I felt as if the build guide did a good... Um, explanation of that so I didn't feel the need to show you basically me doing the same thing um, and that, as I said it has allowed me to see a couple of steps that perhaps uh, could be explained before you come to build the printer um, so firstly uh, when installing the corner brackets um, the guy doesn't necessarily tell you um, so it lists what things have got to be attached to what parts of the rail, but it doesn't tell you what order to put them in. Um, and although you can put in the square nuts into the frame after it's assembled, it is a lot easier to do it before you've put an end on. So that's definitely one thing to make sure you look at when you're making your own D-Bot, is to put corner brackets, um, and if you've got to put nuts in or anything like that, um, do that before you put anything that's going to close off the ends of the rails. Um, another thing is perhaps when you actually come to put in or put together to the two sides of the frame, it's actually quite hard to do on your own because you've got to line up corner brackets, square nuts on three, four different pieces of aluminium. So actually if you can get someone to help you do that, it's a lot easier. Um, and I've actually got a different a couple of different mods on here straight in the build process rather than making the printer and then adding them in. So uh, what I might do is just show you a couple of the um, modifications that I've made um, or that I've put on from other people's mods on Thingiverse uh, and there's links in the description to those. Um, before that though I think we'll just have a look at what's actually left to do. So at the moment, although the bed is in, the bed's in the frame and it's moving up and down, the aluminium bed and the heated bed are not installed yet. So that's left to do. Um, I've got to finish off um, tidying up the belts, but they are in and tensioned. So we've got none of the hot end extruder assembly currently on. Uh, and obviously all of the wiring still to do. Um, at the moment, I've got um, some TMC2130 chips in. And what I would like to do is actually have them set up as um, senseless homing. At the moment, I've got the end stops on because I was having a little trouble with those chips compared to, say, just these normal um, stepper drivers. They, they don't actually go in the same direction. So... I had to f sort of play around with a few things in the firmware to get the silent drivers to work. Uh, and I installed the end stops because basically, because things weren't going in the right direction, it was a very rough movement. Um, so now that I've got the movement working, I want to remove the end stops and see if I can get the sensors homing to work. Um, but other than that, you know, there's not, it's more just tidying up and put the wires in the right places and that. Um, what I also wanted to mention at this point is that I'm not sure if I've mentioned it before, but 
Um, I've been in contact with Triangle Labs on AliExpress. Uh, they're a shop or a seller on AliExpress, um, and they have kindly sent me some in, some products to review. Um, but they are also going to go on this printer for me to review. So I thought I might just show you those things now. Um, so the first thing that I got sent was, or the first thing I'm going to show you is this. Um, let me just zoom in on that for you so you can see it a bit better. There we go. So this is a filament runout sensor. Um, you know, it's basically um, just an end stop in a case that wires into the board and obviously relays its um, state back to the board to know if there's filament running through or not. So there's a few cables, a bit of um, PTFE tube, etc. So that's the first thing. So that's actually going to be um, something that I add to this printer because I intend to run some long, large prints. Um, so the ability to detect if the filament has run out uh, is going to be really good. Now this won't detect, the, it's not a filament, it doesn't detect the filament as such. Um, so if the filament was to stop moving it would not trigger because there is still filament in the path but this will detect if the filament actually runs out uh, and releases the end stop or the, the micro stip switch. Uh, so the next thing I got was a 3D touch. Let me just take that out of the bag. So that is basically um, a BL touch clone I suppose you could say. Um, but they, they call it the, the 3D touch, or the touch sensor. So uh, we've got one of those, and this, one of the mods that I'm actually putting on the printer is a mount to have a BL touch, so that's why I requested one of these. Um, so we'll be able to see how well this works compared to say, um, either just a micro switch or an inductive sensor. Um, and that also comes with sort of a, sort of an extension cable um, bundle, so we'll probably have to extend them even more. Uh, and the next thing is that this printer is going to have a Titan extruder. Again, this is a clone of the E3D version, um, but I've been running a clone version on the printer bot for at least a year, maybe two years, um, and I've not had any problems with it. I've not had any sort of jams and the print quality is, has vast, vastly improved from the stock extruder so I'm happy to have another clone as such. Um, and then the last thing that Triangle Labs was kind enough to send me is, I'm just going to bring this in a little bit closer, uh, was a set of nozzles. So we've got um, basically from 0.25 here, sorry here, all the way down to 0.8, um, so there's a couple of 0.4s in the middle. Um, so we're going to have the opportunity to do some really fine prints in the 0.25, but then also use the 0.8 for some base mode um, prints and really lay down some thick lines. So that's really good. Uh, and they're all compatible with the E3D V6 which this printer will be having. This will be having a genuine E3D V6. Um, so yeah, so that's a few things from Triangle Labs. Let's just zoom out a bit. Um, and that was also, I can also say at this point, obviously thank you to Oosnest who sent the aluminium extrusions for the printer uh, and for to Filamentive for the filament to print parts for the printer. Um, and I actually do think I, I'm really happy with the colour scheme, the black, the red and the white. I think it, it just is quite impactful in the colour scheme, so I'm really happy with that. So let's move the camera and have a look at a couple of the modifications that are on the printer straight from build. Okay, so the first part we're going to have a look at is the basically the extruder carriage, the hot end carriage. Um, so this is made by, um, I'm not going to 
pronounce his name, I'll put a link in the description and just put a link on the screen. Um, for a chap on Thingiverse. Uh, and this is a Titan extruder setup. So I'm actually going to use a little, not a pancake motor, but a smaller motor, a smaller NEMA 17 than the other ones on the machine. Um, and then you'll have the Titan extruder here. Um, and then obviously the E3DV6 on the bottom. Uh, and this will be a direct drive um, extruder coming through the top here. Um, so that was the first modification. And then on, so I won't about show you, but on the back of here there is a space to mount a 50 by 15 radial fan. And then the, I do have the fan duct. So then we'll have, um, this fan duct will be uh, underneath here blowing down on the print, so that's our part cooling fan as well. So that's the first modification, um, and I will cut here and just move the camera to the next one. Okay, so the next modifi modification from the original build guide for the D-Bot is this part here, which is the, the Z-axis bed guide, I suppose you can call it. So the original um, the axis guide sort of almost wraps around the 20 by 40 extrusion um, and uses I think it's still own I think it's four wheels possibly I think there are different versions but it, it's definitely um, a wheeled like the other axis uses v slot mini v slot wheels to ride along the extrusion um, but what this one actually does is let me just focus on that is rides on the inside of the frame. There we go. So you can see here, this is where the V-slot wheel would go, both ends, and then it goes on to the, the end of the extrusion, and then it just literally sort of rides on the inside of the frame. Um, so yeah, so that's the, one modification or the next modification um, and that has actually meant let me just move the camera around that the z-axis um, guide or the, the threaded rods if you like will go on the front and back of the machine as opposed to the left and right um, I think you can still put them on the left and right if you wish but um, in on the Thingiverse page the the person who made the Z-axis guides has got them on the front and back, so that's what I've done. Um, and they're quite clever in the sense that they have got wheel tensioners that means you can adjust the the sort of the pressure on the wheels, which is what these parts are here. So if we look on this one, for example, this actually here, you just put a washer in there. Um, and then when it's attached to the frame, this uh, bolt then just goes through and can push the, the whole thing against the frame. Um, so yeah, so that's the next modification. Um, again, I will cut here and we'll move to the next one. So the next uh, modification is basically this part here and then obviously the opposite end. Uh, and this is the H-bar or XY part. Um, and what basically this part does is because the direct drive extruder causes um, a loss of size in the y-axis, this part basically gives you an offset so you can get that uh, lost space back. Um, so if I just uh, move the camera around slightly, I can show you that. So this obviously is the, the part we spoke about earlier, the uh, extruder carriage. Uh, and this part here will actually ride over the front bar that's in, um, let me just move the camera down, this bar here. Um, this carriage will actually come over the top of it to get you a bit more space back. Um, so yeah, that was one or the next modification that was added. Um, and I think that is it. There's actually, we'll have a look at the bed levelers um, when we, do a next the next video which is going to be all about the bed hopefully um, 
So I think that's pretty much it for today. I'm not gonna go into sort of the electronics or any wiring or anything like that today because uh, I'll do a whole separate video on that. But yeah, so let me just reposition the camera and we can bring this video to an end. Okay, so in this video, we've basically just looked at the frame that is now complete, um, a couple of the modifications and sort of talked about what the next steps are. So I've got a couple of um, parts that I've got to look into buying, which is basically the heated bed. Um, I can't decide whether to put a PCB heated bed, which I could potentially take from the printer bot, or a silicon heat bed, which I can um, purchase from Ooze Nest. So I'm a bit undecided on what I'm going to do just yet. So I've got to look into that. And then obviously, depending on what heat bed I get, will depend on power requirements. Uh, I actually plan to run two power supplies with this printer. One to run all the electronics and the motors and everything else, and then one dedicated to the heated bed. Because um, what I want actually do is to slightly over volt the bed to get a bit more heating time, or a reduced heating time. But that's something again will be in an, uh, another video. So uh, yeah, so if you've got any comments or ask any questions please put them in the comment section um, or on Twitter or on Instagram I will always post things on there um, so yeah until next time uh, thanks for watching thanks you to the sponsors of this build series Ooze Nest, Filamentive and to Triangle Labs for sending some products to review and to add to the printer um, and until next time keep on printing